Hello, my name is Aaron Meary. I'm the Chief Information Officer for the University of Texas at Austin, for the Dell Medical School and for UT Health Austin. Welcome to the F50 Capital Summit. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about Austin, Texas, what makes this place great, what UT does to anchor this, in, this entire place, what UT Health Austin has done with technology, what's going on in healthcare today, where it's going, how you can help, and what we've learned from the recent COVID-19 pandemic and vaccination efforts, and what types of technology are on our radar. Some bits about UT Austin. First of all, maybe I might be biased, maybe a little bit, hook them. We're one of the best university R1 institutions on the planet. The types of research we do here are world renowned. In fact, we helped discover the mRNA process that actually went into the vaccines that hopefully you got recently at a location near you. In addition to that, we have our Texas Advanced Computing Center where we do really massive computational research projects. We're also, the, it's a cool fact, we were a site that actually rendered the black hole image that you probably saw about a year and a half, two years ago. So we do things here that are very different. That's why the mantra for UT Austin is, what starts here changes the world. In addition to that, we recruit world-class faculty. We have some of the best, most world-renowned surgeons that perform surgery here, both in pediatrics and adult. Folks from Dr. Chuck Frazier, at, operating at Dell Children's Medical Center, all the way over to uh, Women's Health, uh, with numerous physicians, or George McCones and others, that are really helping to advance maternal fetal care for Central Texas. Austin, Texas has a population of around two and a half million folks. In the downtown corridor, close to a million people. Although every day people are moving here, so I'm sure that number is a whole lot more. Um, but to the degree of it, what we've done here is make sure that technology meets practice, meets evidence-based design, anchored by a medical school that's one of the newest and most advanced in the nation. Together, when you put all that together, you have a recipe for success, which is exactly what we saw during COVID-19. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this in detail and look forward to taking you through the journey. So let me tell you a little bit about what we have learned here at UT Health Austin. Let's start with the COVID pandemic. First of all, what we learned was that technology had just not been keeping up with the Joneses. Consumerization of technology and digitization of technology was an expectation of the patients that we were seeing. So when the inevitable decision came to flip everything to telemedicine and suddenly make it as easy as ordering an Uber from my phone, traditional healthcare stacks could not do it. In fact, it was so bad that a place like UT Austin, which had numerous investments in technology that was legacy, we would contact those vendors, they would just simply shrug and say, I'm sorry, we weren't designed for that. We weren't designed to operate in a modern cloud architecture, leveraging containers or leveraging secure data stores, or hey, just sign a business associate agreement so you could comply with HIPAA. That's a major encumbrance. So we turned to consumer technologies like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, and others to try to get over that divide to give people care at their homes where they desperately needed it. It was successful. And we were able to integrate those types of technologies with our traditional data our stacks, like our electronic medical record and others, to make sure that it would work at the right place at the right time. That's an important facet to keep in mind. As this journey continues to evolve and we continue to learn things around data analytics and others, what we also realized was that data stacks and data standards and, and healthcare IT also aren't keeping up with the Joneses. Consumerization of data is important. Making sure you map to something like OMOP or some more modern architecture is important in getting away from mumps and some of the legacy technology stacks. Every healthcare CIO had this Eureka movement that we've been investing millions upon millions in a technology that should have been gone 10 years ago. That's why the fax machine still lives even today. That's why pagers still even live today. Those have to go away. What else did we learn? Equity. Equity by design is a critical component. When we put out home temperature monitoring applications so the community could monitor their, their temperatures at home and the safety and security of their own house, it would alert them to say, hey, Aaron, your temperature is spiking over 101. You need to present to the emergency department. What we quickly realized was that it's not a one shop fits all. You have to design something multilingual, multi-support, multimodality, meaning Apple or Android or other must be there or responsive web design. These are key tenants that have been in every other industry for so long. Healthcare was like, oh gee, we need to do the same. We also realized that. Furthermore, this story continues. As we then begin to collaborate with the rest of the community, 
data and standards simply aren't there for healthcare. Public health and healthcare delivery organizations, for whatever reason, really have never been on the same page. That's a major issue in a pandemic. What did we have to do? Start teaching people to stop relying on fax machines. I challenge all of you, when after this discussion, Google, around May of last year, Austin and fax machines and COVID-19 case reporting and see the stories you read about what happened here in Austin, Texas. We overcame that dough. We taught, we worked together, we collaborated, we taught. But you as investors, you as an industry can help continue to fuel this to go forward and make sure that when the next pandemic happens, we're not stuck there. What else did we learn? Vaccination efforts. It is not easy when you're asked to deal with multi rules and different layering and figuring out where did Aaron get vaccinated before? What has he had before? Did he have Moderna? Did he have Pfizer? And then you make it even more complicated by putting in things like age limits or hey, children are not allowed to apply or golly, you're on a university with about 100,000 people every single day that are, that are clamoring for it. But the majority of them are under the age of 35. They weren't eligible until relatively recently. That's tough. Again, technology could help that with modern customer relationship management software suites out there, being able to quickly segment data by design, being able to in instantiate privacy. So you're really building in data for privacy upfront and giving granular consent and control to people is critical. What else did we learn? A unique patient identifier is still a myth in healthcare. Imagine that. Aaron can go from Dallas to Austin to Houston to maybe Boston and I would have multiple records of Aaron. You can't link them all together. Boggles your mind. But other technologies have done this for other segments and other industries for decades. How did finance get past this? How did manufacturing get past this? We could do the same thing here with the right technology stacks on a more modern platform. What else did we learn? Well, collaborating with sports teams like the Longhorn football team is critical, but time is of the essence. Healthcare, technology typically hasn't been rapid. You may want your care rapid, and I hope you do get it at, at rapid, but technology often lags. That's why your bills or your lab results often take days to get back to you. That's not gonna work in a pandemic. Time could literally mean the difference between a dozen deaths, a hundred deaths or more. It's a scary thought to think that we were in this situation before COVID-19. All this did was highlight inequities of care. So as UT Austin came together and we overcame this pandemic and we suddenly became now one of two major vaccination hubs for Central Texas, all of these efforts came together to say, how do we bandage and collaborate with the private industry, with what we have been doing, with manufacturers that are out there, outside of industry, bring it all together into one stop shop. Let me give you also a cool story. At last spring, we were running out of PPE. This is a protective gear that you put over your face and 95 uh, masks, which filter the 0.2 microns necessary to keep someone safe. We we're running out of them. The whole country was. I said, gee, we're at UT Austin. Can't we 3D print our own N95 mask? How hard could that be? I think every startup CEO has probably said that or founder, like, how hard could this be? I'll tell you what, it's hard, but we overcame it. So we 3D printed our own N95 masks to outfit every single one of our physicians, but that's not all. We worked with the Microsoft HoloLens division to make sure that it was custom fit to your face so that if you had a funny nose or whatever else, it actually fit you. We gave one mask to you for COVID-19 positive suspected, one mask to you that was for COVID-19 negative or no symptoms, and then one as a hot spare. These could be autoclaved or washed every single night, and you could reuse them and reuse them and reuse them and just replace a little filter, 3M filter in it. Magic, right? No, it was ingenuity. It's what the industry can do when you bring technology to healthcare and change the paradigm shift to move the ball forward. That's what we do here. That's what Austin, Texas is about. That's the caliber of people we recruit here. That's why Oracle and Tesla and Dell Technologies and all these institutions, organizations, and tech giants are coming here and want our students, our clinicians, our technologists, because that's how we think. There is no no. There is no, that mountain is too high. Instead, it's how hard could that actually be? Now, beyond COVID-19, let me give you a sense of some of the other technologies and other projects we have going on across the UT Health Austin clinical enterprise. In our dermatology clinic, we're using high definition cameras 
tethered together with artificial intelligence behind the scenes to quickly spot if a mole on your arm or on your body is cancerous. Imagine that. You no longer have to go for a biopsy. You no longer have to go home and worry, golly, is this thing, should I worry about this? Is this melanoma? What's happening here? Because of the power of artificial intelligence and complex algorithms behind the scene, all with high definition images. In our Neurology Institute, our physicians and our researchers are working together to make sure that folks that have been paralyzed with spinal cord injuries can move their limbs again. The way they're able to do this is tethering computers to the actual human brain, and people are now able to touch, to feel, to walk. Imagine that. People who thought their entire life would be riddled with difficulty, suddenly being able to overcome that because of a computer to brain interface. Amazing. Let me also tell you about what we are doing in pediatric cardiology. It's an amazing program where we completed the first transplant of a neonatal infant in all of Central Texas just the other month, and they were just discharged from the home. What does that actually mean, though, to be able to do a heart transplant on an infant? Beyond the data, the systems, the pathway, the clinical technologies, there's customer relationship management, there's care management, there's home rehab. All these pieces have to fit together for a tiny human that is counting on you to live out their life and relative normalcy. That's technology. That's the power of technology. Furthermore, let me tell you about opioid syndromic surveillance. It's a sad fact in Texas that we had a problem with opioid addiction prior to the pandemic. Now post pandemic, it's even worse. The problem in Texas, as I was explaining earlier, is that not all the records link together. So we don't actually know what zip codes and geographies of Texas have the worst issues with opioid dependency. So what did we do? We partnered with Google, we partnered with many companies and said, let's build a platform. It's never been done before, how hard could it be? And we built a platform from opioid syndromic surveillance that links emergency responders, hospitals, county, all together to be able to share data effortlessly and be able to make sure that Narcan, the life-saving drug that you wanna give somebody when they're having an overdose, is administered and deployed in the right areas. Why would you deploy Narcan to an area with a low uh, high rate of opioid addiction when there's other areas that absolutely need it and you know this drug doesn't have enough to go around to everybody? You have to work smarter, not harder. That's technology. Furthermore, look at data analytics. Here, because of UT Austin and the caliber and skill of folks that we have from a data analysis and data intelligence level, we're bringing area-wide technologies and data sets together to say what's actually happening for a population or cohort of, of patients. I'll give you a specific example. Unfortunately, also another byproduct of Austin is our, is our homeless population that need tremendous help. And we're doing an amazing job, led by Dr. Tim Mercer and others, of helping those communities in need. But it takes analytics. How am I going to pinpoint what comorbidities, that's what conditions you already had existing, are in a certain community and deal with you there? Otherwise, you're going to present to my emergency room very, very sick and very costly to the health system. We can take care of you in your side of care. We can take care of you at the shelter. We can take care of you at the grocery store. We can help navigate you to, to areas. Further to that point, what did we discover during contact tracing for the pandemic? We discovered food deserts. We discovered areas that people live in that have no access to fresh quality food or water. These people were living and suffering the entire time and COVID-19 brought it up. So what were we able to do? Bring navigation services to them. But what could technology do? Technology allowed us to partner with Uber, Whole Foods, and other organizations in, in Austin, Good Apple, to bring food to them, to put these people at the fingertips of getting fresh access to food and water. Imagine that. It was data, it was technology, it was a wherewithal and an understanding of what the problem is, and more importantly, it was people saying, that can't be too hard, now can it? That's what this can do. So as you think about organizations, what to invest in, particularly in healthcare, I challenge you to look for technologies that have been successfully applied to other industries. Say, can this be applied to healthcare? Where could it be applied to healthcare? And most importantly, find the people who are willing to say, that can't be too hard, can it? Thanks for listening.